What's up, everybody? Welcome back to our channel, Four Collectors. And today on this special episode, I'm talking to two Warren Spawn Super Collectors. It should be a lot of fun. See you guys after the intro. Welcome to Four Collectors. All right, so first up, we got uh, old reliable there, Matt from the card story. How you doing, Matt? Doing all right, Theo. Thanks for having me on. That's cool. So, uh, so you are a, a new Warren Spawn collector. How long have you been collecting uh, Warren Spawn now? Uh, just over four months. Wow. Okay, so you're just you're the rookie, and, and we also got a veteran here. So, uh, first time on Four Collectors, it's Dan. Welcome to the show, Dan. Thank you for having me on, Theo, and nice to see my friend Matt uh, from our Hank Aaron show. Wonderful to be on, gentlemen, and uh, happy holidays. Happy holidays to you, too. Thanks. Good to see you, Dan. So, Dan, how, how long have you been collecting Warren Spawn? Uh, tough question to answer, but it's more than four months, I can say that. <laughs> Since you were a child, maybe? <laughs> I, I, you know... And you'll, you'll ask this question, but it's probably more like four decades, actually. Yeah. Oh wow, that's crazy! All right, well that's 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 cool. We got we got two different two different sides of things. I know, I know you got you and Matt have been kind of going back and forth sometimes about just different questions about the the Warren Spawn set and things like that. So it's cool to get you guys together. Um, and uh, why don't we start off with some just general questions? So, is he the best left-handed pitcher of all time in you guys' opinion? I'll let Dan go first. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I I, I I, think I did a video on, on Warren Spawn. It was the second one I ever did on my channel. So it's about six months ago. Uh -huh. And um, I, I, I conclusively proved that he is, in fact, the best left-handed pitcher of all time. So okay. you can go back and watch that. Or I can tell you, um, I mean, it's more than just war. It's also just uh, consistency, uh, pitching for both good and bad teams, Um being able to pitch until he was in his 40s. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff. But, you know, he was both a control pitcher and a strikeout pitcher in many respects. So a lot to, lot to offer, um, you know, in terms of his full career. He played professional baseball in the 1930s, and then he played in, up until the late 60s. So, um, you know, pretty much a historical figure. Um, both, you know, in baseball and in America as a war hero. So I, I've kind of decided that Warren Spahn is, in fact, the best left-handed pitcher of all time. Matt, do you agree? Uh, I, I unequivocally agree. And, I, I, you know, it's funny. That recently on Twitter, I know Dan and I are both on there and seeing probably the same things. Like, a lot of people come out with these top 10 rankings, and he's, like, usually bottom half of the top 10 of, of best left-handed pitchers. I'm sitting there thinking, okay, this guy's got – the most wins of anyone since the live ball in the live ball era started, right? The pitched the whole career after 1920, most complete games since 1920 of any pitcher, and he gets not even the top five of left-handed pitchers in a lot of people's rankings. And I get it; like different errors are hard to measure, but I do think, like I, I think he's the best left-handed pitcher. I do, which I know you have some people that believe in the high peak theory, like the Koufax, etc. But I, but I really think, like if you look at the the body of work, as they say, right. He's not, he's not the best left-handed pitcher. I think um, I, I think there's a bad perception out there for guys who um, are younger. They they think he's a stat compiler, and it's it's actually completely false. Um, can any of you guys talk about how he actually was the best pitcher in the league for for a very very long period of time? Well, one of the things that Spawn has going against him is that the Cy Young. Uh, it didn't exist throughout the first half of his career, basically. And the Cy Young Award was only given to one pitcher in Major League Baseball. It wasn't split up into leagues until, I don't know, like the early 60s or something. So if you go back and look at Spahn's um, numbers throughout the 1950s, he could won, he could won four or five Cy Young Awards. And then he'd be talked about, I think, in, in you know, like Steve Carlton won, I think, maybe four Cy Young Awards. I think Steve Carlton is not nearly as good as Warren Spahn. So I think that's one of the things that would have helped him out if, if just, you know, the awards were more readily available to him than some of the later guys. Gotcha. Um, so I guess my next question is, um, 
Matt, why did you why did you decide to collect Warren Spawn just because he was he was just a great pitcher? What was your what was your uh, motivation? Yeah, a couple, a couple of things, right? Trying to in, in the spirit of like I've gotten a lot of the Hank Aaron cards pretty quickly for his master set. And so I'm kind of getting down to the odd, like very, very oddball items and uh, harder to find items where I'm not able to pick up as many. So trying to keep that net wide, I, I try to try to pick up another player. And I kind of did a lot of reflecting and realizing I'm really a player collector at heart. I used to collect Sandberg, collect Dudley, then Aaron, and now Spawn, right? So yeah, I really just enjoy that where you try to like pick a player and focus. And so obviously I, I, I'm like, look, I have, I have what I believe to be one of the best hitters. And again, I know people may disagree. Obviously, Williams, Mays usual, et cetera, right, Ruth. Um, but then in, in pitching, I want to have someone comparable, right? So, and then honestly, like Dan's video, you know, helped, I, mean, I would say influence or inspire. I don't want to influence it as a negative connotation a lot of times, but definitely inspired me, right? So I watched that video right when he first posted it, you know, back in June, July, whenever that was. And just did a lot of research, right? So realizing how uh, underappreciated I think he is, right? So I, I kind of like the underdog. Maybe it's just the, I don't know, I remember watching Rudy as a kid, all these movies, right? So like, I always enjoy those Hoosiers, et cetera. And to me, he's just like a big underdog and he's so humble, right? And we may talk about it later, but like everyone's always like, well, if Williams would have not gone to war, he might have got been the home run king or whatever. And I mean, they ask Spawn that same thing. I know Dan mentioned this in his video, right? Like he's like, no, I wouldn't have won as many games as I did because I, I wasn't, I wouldn't have had the grit or mental toughness that I gained by being a, in the war, right? So just the humility of Spawn, I think just carries through. And I think people just, maybe they just miss it. I don't know. I feel like it's one of the things where I feel, maybe just privilege that I get to realize how great he is. And I think a lot of people don't see it. Right. And I, and I do think maybe like 50 years from now, cause you know, it is now like no one's alive that saw Christy Matthewson pitch. Right. Or no one that's going to, no one that's able to articulate it probably very well mm-hmm. or, or, or Johnson even. Right. So like, yeah, stats. Right. So I do, I do think in like 50 years, people may go back and realize that no one's still here that maybe saw a spawn pitch. And they realize like just based on stats alone, if you, I mean, he's it's gotta be one of the best pitchers of all time. Right. So forget even left-handed. Right. So, with that in mind, I guess I just want to have one of the better pitchers that's, you know, in my era, so to speak, uh, and have a, a good um, representation of him in the collection. Yeah. So, so Dan, um, did you, did you grow up a Braves fan um, or what, what drew you to, uh, to your love for Spawn outside of what Matt said? Well, well, you're close. Um, I grew up in New York, but my father is originally from Boston. Okay. Uh, my grandfather grew up about a mile from Braves Field. Mm-hmm. So the, my father's side of the family is basically all uh, Boston Braves fans. Wow. And um, so my father was a big Warren Spahn fan. And, you know, I, I heard about it. And Spahn, when I was a kid, Spahn was, you know, only been retired for, you know, half a dozen years or whatever. And so he was around a lot. And he was a signer. He was in. He was a coach. He was around the major leagues a lot. And my father told me a lot of pretty good stories about Spahn. Um and in particular, uh, the 1948 uh, Boston Braves that won the National League pennant, it was pretty much the two pitchers spawn insane and this that whole spawn insane and pray for rain thing. Um, yeah. So it really comes down to a family thing for me. But I, I'm glad I inspired Matt because I, I like to inspire some people with my videos. <laughs> but the, um, the, the thing about spawn is that the deeper you get, the more you appreciate them. Um, and... I I had collected a lot of the cards and I, you know, I knew all the numbers and I knew his, his baseball history, but I didn't know how special he was as a human being until I had done all the research for that video. And that sort of, you know, really solidified um, the idea that I, that this was going to be a player who I was going to try to get as many cards as I could get. And uh, like, like Matt, I am a player collector. Um, although I do have sets and I have some teams, but, you know, at you know, deep down, I'm a player collector, so he pretty much fits in perfectly with my collection and my life for the most part. Awesome, awesome. You think, um, you think, you think him being uh, on the Braves while they moved around, you think that might have kind of hurt his popularity actually, because you know he's it wasn't in one city the whole the whole time, maybe. Yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, if he was in Boston for for thirty years, he'd be like Ted Williams, basically. You know, yeah. um. And Milwaukee is a small, um, you know, it's a small market, although they have all four major teams for the most part. Um, yeah. I, I think that, and it was a new market too. So, um, you know, when, and when, when we get into the cards, we'll see Milwaukee walking crazy for the Braves because they didn't really have much going on at that point. Uh, you know, there was no Bucks or, uh, 
there was I, I guess they don't really have a football team. Oh, Green Bay Packers. Yeah, Packers cool. are close. Yeah. 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 So, um, so no, Theo, that's a great point. It, I, I actually believe that to be true, and I hadn't even really thought about it that much. Cool. Um, I, I before we start, I do I do want to talk about one thing here, and I I think this unfortunately will be a, a very low watch video because uh, the hobby doesn't like pitchers. Um, plain and simple. So, do you guys? I guess what's your thoughts on? Um, do you think the hobby treats pitchers properly, actually, and the the prices are what they are, and that's the market, or do you think do you think pitchers are underappreciated uh, in the hobby in general? I, I think it's interesting, right? Because there are some pitchers in modern baseball, like you look at Kershaw, like his rookie cards are still very valuable. I feel like he's one of the maybe just just because he's like, and again, another left hander, right? But um, yeah. Like I, I do think, like if you look at his '06 Bowman Chrome, like those things are, I mean, stupid prices in my mind, right? Like you're talking tens of thousand dollars for the Chrome rookie refractor autos and stuff, right? So, and obviously Koufax, uh, for the length of his career, like his rookie card's super expensive. I feel like, right? Like you're talking four figures for anything above like a two. Uh, I don't have one. I mean, I was I used to have one, but um, so I like, think it just depends on the on the player. Then obviously look back at the pre-war. I would say Matthewson and, and Johnson cards are very valuable, right? So I think it just depends on the era. Um, I think there's some a couple of players from each generation that kind of get that uh, valuation, but then yeah, for the most part, the rest are left to true collectors, is what I would call them. people that aren't worried about value or um, dollars, so to speak, when they look at their collection, right? So because um, yeah, there's a lot of people that collect Verlander, I think his cards compared to Kershaw are very reasonable uh, for comparable careers, in my opinion, right? But Kershaw, for whatever reason, maybe it's L.A. versus Detroit, probably. So again, back to your question about Boston versus Milwaukee, I think, right? So I think there's something just the big markets generally drive up values of players, right? So obviously that probably helped Matthewson, right? So um, and not, not to take anything away from him, he won the most what, most 20 game winning seasons. Think of anyone, right? So, but Spawn, I think, is number two. And again, people don't really talk about it much, right? So I, I think it just depends on the market, depends on the era. Um, there's probably a few from each era that have what I would say is. Uh, that value, at least in the top five or ten of the players of that generation, which is all you could ask for, I think, right? People do like the home run for whatever it is, right? So, yeah. And Dan, do you have anything to add, or are we good to go? <laughs> no, I think I think that um, pitchers are undervalued in the hobby. I'm not sure why. I Matt just brought up a bunch of pitchers, and I'm looking behind me. My T206 is four of the top five guys I have in the front. Cy Young, Walter Johnson. Um, Christy Matthewson, uh, Mordecai Brown. I mean, there's there's all these pitchers in the pre-war that that are actually kind of expensive cards. Um, yeah. But the other thing is, there are more there are more hitters out there. I mean, it's just a numbers thing, also. So you know, there's a certain like Koufax, the rookie card. I mean, that to me that took me a long time to get because it's an expensive card. So yeah. I, I don't know. I think that in in vintage baseball, yes, there are more uh, hitters with higher numbers in terms of value, but there are plenty of pictures out there that cost you an arm and a leg. So, you know, I, yeah, to me, I, it doesn't make a difference to me. If it's a player so, that I admire his history, I'm going to collect them. Uh, yeah. Somebody, somebody who's intriguing to me actually is, is Whitey Ford because Ford had an amazing career in the sixties and um, played for the biggest, uh, most popular team. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know anybody that's a super Whitey Ford collector. Maybe there's some people on Twitter I, I know I, I'm in a small space here on YouTube. So have you guys seen uh, Whitey Ford collectors out there? No. 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 The only <laughs> Ford card that's worth anything is his rookie card, which is highly overpriced. Yeah, uh, I don't have it. I do have his 51 Burke Ross, which is his um, alternative rookie, and that cost me a pretty pretty penny. So, But you're right. Otherwise, 60s Ford cards are practically commons, and his 50s are not. You know, really not that expensive. And I do not know a, a Whitey Ford Super Collector. <laughs> okay. All right. I know I went off the beaten path there, but let's uh let's get into it. So I um a little bit of a let me uh let me switch screens here. A little bit to uh, a, a nod to Dan's channel. If you haven't seen Dan's channel, it's it's really, really good. Dan brings uh brings super collectors on and he has them um divide up their cards in different ways and he shows their collection on the screen. And I thought since Dan was coming off for collectors, I would kind of honor him and do a similar type of a video here. So I think it's it's a great setup, Dan. And um, if, if you're not subscribed to Dan, go check out his channel. Um, so first off, we got the 1940s here. And um, 
basically Matt and Dan sent me their 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 cards prior. So these this is a combination of both their collections. So um, let's start with Matt. Uh, Matt, you picked out a couple cards from the '40s that you want to highlight. So why don't we go into them? Sure. So this this big monstrosity, I think as we called it earlier, um, off off air is, is the uh, the number W six zero three. So these were in the Sports Exchange magazine. You could send off and get a complete set. Uh, it's this oversized card, obviously really old pre war picture of Warren, which I was really why I was captivated by it. There's only maybe three or four of these graded, so I want to get one of these. This is believed to be his first issue. I'm going to show another item in a minute that's also issued in '47. So he wasn't in the first series; he was in the later series. Um, it's a blank back, right? So, it, so I, I actually saw one ungraded sold after I bought this one on auction that someone actually filled in like the stats, which was kind of cool. I actually kind of wanted to buy it, but it went for a little more than I thought it would. Consider a bunch of handwriting, but someone wrote in like his height, his weight, his record for the prior year, et cetera, which was really cool. Um, would have been nice to have that one just because it, it was interesting, right? But this one, obviously, wanted to protect it, keep it slapped up. But yeah, you would have got a set of like, I think they came in like set of sets of 10, and there was like maybe 10 or 11 series. I also got the DiMaggio from this. I haven't shown it yet, I think, on the channel, but um, really cool. I get, like, it's believed to be his first issue, but I know there's also another one from 47. Yeah, and there's the blank back. You can see the, the wonderful uh, humidity, I think, that happened when they pressed it, but. Really oh. cool item. Happy to have it. Um, probably one of his earliest pictures that I've been able to find, right? So really nice, go, nice go, item. Go ahead and do the second, the second one, too, and then sure. I'll switch it in. And I forgot to get this one out of the baggie, so I apologize if this glare is bad. This is from 47. Uh, this is the Tip Top Bread. So these would have came, like, in the bread wrapper. So these condition on these was pretty bad. Um, they actually can see in the back an advertisement for the bread. Nice. I um, hope everyone having a tip top day out there, right? So just a interesting, uh, you know, regional f or, you know food issue. I know a lot of players or a lot of collectors enjoy these. Uh, and on top of just the tops and Bowman issues, it's kind of a nice hunt. So you'll see as you go through our pictures, I kind of try to prioritize some of the more oddball ones first. Um, again, I, I'm, I plan to get all the cards eventually that I can, uh, but I want to get these as I was able to come across them. So. That's really cool. I, I'm sure that I'm sure both of those probably are are pretty scarce, right? Uh, yeah, I think they're pretty they're pretty hard to find. I and mean, it's probably like I don't know, like I said, a handful graded of the first larger one, and maybe like ten or fifteen of the tip top bread total between PSA and SGC. And again, wow. there's always people that collect ungraded, right? So I don't right. want to undercall that. I'm sure some people like to have them uh, raw. I know people like that word, right? Or ungraded, I guess, because uh, they prefer it that way. So I'm sure there's more out there, obviously, but. But I find the ones I can't, you're not going to find again. I tend not to like let those go by. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, yeah, you don't see the tip top bread cards that often. Um, Dan, uh, you want to show yours now? Yeah, no, I um, I am giving four collectors a premiere here because <laughs> this has never been seen on YouTube before. Wow, it is a ticket to the 1948 World Series, and for five dollars, you could get to see. Warren Spawn pitch against Bob Lemon. And it's cool because Spawn is actually in the label up here. And um, the other thing about this is that it's not only is it authentic, but it was graded um, by PSA as a 1.5, a number that doesn't mean anything to me because there's tape here and this tape here, which means some kid who went to this game took it home in 1948 and taped it up on his wall for how many years? And ultimately, it ended up in my hands. It is a, uh, whoop, there we go. It's a ticket to Braves Field, which is also very special to me. So this is the 1948 World Series, Game 2. Uh, Bob Lemon uh, prevailed over Warren Spawn in that game, and the Indians ultimately prevailed over the um, Braves in the series in six games. Um, I got this at the Philly show. Uh, I was uh, going through a box of old tickets by one of those uh, old collector guys, and I uh, found this and couldn't believe it and i didn't even know that when it was real whether it was real or not and i thought that it could be it might not have been real so i sent it off to a psa and sure enough here it is um wow premiere on the four collectors channel but you'll see this again on my channel <laughs> that is awesome the second that, well, one is the um is the the exhibits it's the 47 to 66 exhibits but it is the 1948 national league champion boston braves and warren spawn is in this he is right there, second row on the left, second person. Uh, and so uh, I don't know all the players in this. I know this online. You can you can find one that could point it out. But you got Johnny Sane up here. You got Tommy Holmes. You got Bob Elliott. 
and of course Spawn. So um, this one I bought in an auction. I'm certain that it was, um, what's it called? Uh, Love of the Game auctions. And uh, I didn't pay that much for this. I think it was less than 50 bucks, and it's a uh, PSA 4. So happy to have this one too. Well, wow, Dan, do you have the uh, Leaf nearby? Because uh, that's my favorite Spawn card. I would love to just see it. Yeah, this is the 49 Leaf. Um, I bought this in a back of a serious auction for less than $150, which is a great price for a Leaf wow. card. Spawn is a short print. And um, I think it's just 48 49 Yeah, it says 48 49 but we all know if we've done our research that it is a 1949 issue. A uh, little faded, and there is a crease right in there that you can't see on the camera, but you can definitely see it when you look at the card yourself. That's 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 awesome. I love that card. Uh, Matt, I see on the screen you don't have a Leaf card. What are you doing, man? <laughs> I'm, I'm looking for the right one. I definitely uh, – it's on my list, my short list for Spawn for sure. I yeah. love that orange. I know you did that Halloween episode, uh, Dan. So yeah, really... yeah, it made it in. Did it? Did it make it in? It was what is one of the orange cards? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aaron, I think you had. A, you just got the Aaron too, right? Or did... yeah, the Aaron is orange. Yeah, that was a fun episode. But yeah, the that color was, back then is just crazy. Like, those are those are all beautiful story. cards in the bottom left there. I want all of those, of course. I'm gonna eventually. Do, I'm gonna do a red and uh, red and green Christmas one too. So. Oh, nice, good idea. Or to that, nice. that'll be in a, in a week or so. Cool. Um. I love how your ticket sub, uh, the label on the side says Lemon Spawn on it. Did you have to tell PSA to put that on there? No, they no. did it themselves. I'm really happy that they did it, too. <laughs> yeah, that's that's really, really cool. Um, so, all right. so, so, Dan, is game one going to be, like, would that have been, like, Satchel and uh, Sane? Or I haven't looked at the baseball reference. The game, note. Game, one, game one is a one uh contest where Bob Feller gives up one run and Johnny Sane pitches a complete game shutout. Um, I have a signed copy of um, by Sane of the photograph of him being mobbed by his teammates as he comes up. The wow, field. that's awesome! It's a cool one. I, I'll show that soon. Awesome, is, look forward to it. Cool. Yeah. All right, so we're going into the early fifties now. We got some more cards to choose from. Uh, once again, um, it's actually dance cards are on the uh, on the left there, underneath where it says early nineteen uh, fifties. Matt's cards are actually on the right there. Um, Matt, are you uh, you ready to show the two cards you picked up? Sure. All right. So first I'll show the uh, – and I know this is in Dan's photo, so hopefully Dan this isn't one of the two you're looking to show. But this is the 51 Bowman. I just love the leg kick. I want to get at least one card in here with the leg kick. I know I have some portrait ones coming up from other uh, years. So I had to get one in there with that famous leg kick, leg kick we all know. Um, obviously the back of the Bowman is pretty clean. A lot of these have um, – wax stains and whatnot and i wanted to try to find one without the wax stains so paid up a little bit for it but i wanted to get one that uh that i'd be happy with for, for like a permanent card right because i know i've done a lot of upgrading with aaron so i'm trying to use some of the lessons learned and you'll see a little higher grade probably on the spawn than you have in my aaron cards i'm probably to go back and rebuy re some of those other ones that get a little bit nicer version uh to kind of have a permanent one for the collection so that's the first one and I don't know what they wouldn't talk about, too. And it drives me crazy. I know I've talked about it, Theo. I think mean, I Dan I talked about it. His birthday is almost always wrong. Like, so this one, you can see 1922. Uh, where's it at? Over here. Like It's obviously April 23rd, 1921. It, it happens a lot of times on his cards. Tops even famously did an issue later in the 59 Tops where they had three different versions of the card because it kept screwing up his birthday so badly. <laughs> and then I, I know, again, back to the kind of the oddball or regional card. So... When they moved to Milwaukee, there was a dry cleaner there, Spick and Span, that put out a lot of issues. I think there's six total for Spawn. I have four of them so far, but this is the 53 to 55 Spick and Span. Um, there's only, I think, one or two of these graded uh, total. This is wow. the first year they started putting, like, the little uh, kind of slogan on the back. So um, it's, it's just interesting. I, I like that they put, like, what does this say? It says... The work is wonderful and spick and span. One day service is terrific for men on the go. So just interesting, like, advertisement. Uh, but a really cool portrait of Spawn in the early days in Milwaukee. So I want to show that one. And then I, I think we mentioned doing a bonus one, Theo, if that's okay. This yeah, yeah, please. This isn't seen, this isn't seen very often. There actually hasn't been any of these graded yet. This is the 7 by 10 Spawn, spick and span. This is their first issue they did in 53. Um, there was a set of 13 um, of these big portraits. Uh, I want to say Rick uh, Vintage Oddball Cards showed a card from this set uh, when he was with Mangini earlier this week on the on the Misfits channel. But uh, this is the Spawn. I actually have all 12 of the players, but then there's a 13th card of the stadium. 
that I'm sure a lot of kids probably just pitched and kept the players. But I'm going to obviously get this one sent in to get protected. It's going to probably be, a, you know, a one. I don't see any creases but the corners. I mean, it's not – it's fine. I'm just happy to have one and add it to the collection. Um, but I want to get it protected for posterity's sake, so. Yeah, that's that's really, really cool. Um, I cannot believe none of those are graded yet. That's insane. Yep. Um, all right, let's go into uh, – let's see what Dan's got there. So um, I don't have that many 52 tops, and uh, I just like to show off this card because I don't really uh, – you don't see it that often, even though, um, you know, it's not a rarity. It's not one of the high numbers. But it's Warren Spahn, 1952 tops, uh, beautiful red card, 4.5 grade. I bought this from Ryan Nolan from Breakout Cards. It came to me with a cracked slab, um, and you could see the footprint on the on the um, package because somebody at UPS had stepped on it. Oh. So cool, cool story. Ryan said, "Send it to PS. Uh, send it to SGC. Have it reslabbed. I'll pay for it." He did exactly that. It came back, and it looks even better now. So cool story of a cool guy doing a nice thing and getting me a wonderful card. Um, the other thing is this card, Johnston Cookies. It is a 1953 Johnston Cookies. This is the first card to feature Warren Spawn in a Milwaukee Braves hat. As he, um, his 53 Bowman and his 53 Tops are both with Boston Braves hats. So, um, and Johnston Cookies, as we know, uh, produced um, sets of only Milwaukee Braves in 52, 53 and 54. I didn't even know there was a 55, but now we know because of Matt's channel that there was indeed a 55. Uh, and, and we know the whole story behind that, unfortunately. But this is a great card also, and uh, really enjoy it. Um, see, the back is like kind of a cool baseball card. It's awesome. Yeah, I, I honestly I honestly think Tops should have hired the Johnson Cookies team. for <laughs> <laughs> like, like their photography was excellent. The pictures they chose, the backs of the cards. Yeah, the back is ter terrific. It's, it's better than Tops. <laughs> yeah, they used a player number, which would have been a problem, right? But uh, they'd had to get around that issue. Maybe they picked the best player at each position with that number. But uh, but even that one, I didn't show the other spick and span. The spick and span with the leg kick you see on the top uh, row of my my cards up there. Like, yeah, I mean that like that's a beautiful card. Like, I just, yeah, the photography on some of these regional issues is uh, underappreciated. I guess probably the right which, way to say it. Which year is that? Um... The, the big kick spick and span that you have. So that's the 54 to 56. I think I think it might be coming up in a minute, right? But then... Um, my, mine like has a kick and it's a spick and span. But I think it's just... Yeah, that's the same one. That's the same one you have. It's, it's, oh, it is. Okay. It is. And then the... Um, because one of those multi-year issues, I think I put it in the earliest, probably just based on the first year listed. But there's a 55 die cut. I don't have for either Spawn or Aaron. And the die cut part for for Warren is his actual leg, which is incredible. I, I'm going to get it eventually. It's going to cost me... More than I like to admit on, on camera, but I will get it. I'll share it when I do. <laughs> the, the the leg is die cut. <laughs> yeah, the leg, the leg, the leg kick and his head like the die cut part. It's really cool. Uh, All right, so let's um let's move on to the late 1950s. Um, got some great cards here to pick from. Matt, uh, what uh, what two cards did you pick out for the late 50s? So one's going to be hard to see. I'll try to zoom in. I, I, you see that 55 cookies at the top that uh, I had like the partial panel. But this one, and I'll try to zoom in on Warren here if I can do this. Right, It's hard to see what I'm trying to show. But he's obviously in the uh, – this is the golden stamps. So Warren's up here in the top right corner. It's the complete Braves page. I, I didn't even realize this when I got it. Like the back of this is my favorite part of this. They have the entire roster, all their stats. Oh, wow. Um, and they actually have a place to put like the team, team sticker – Cameras backwards. The team sticker, you can fix that on the back up here, like to have it all on one page. But I don't know. I thought this was really interesting. I got this recently on an eBay auction. There was a Theo remembers this. Was, there was someone that was selling a bunch of Clemente, Aaron, Spawn, just a bunch of crazy rare items. This is actually the only one graded by PSA. Now these are out there, right? There's complete books I've seen for they did four teams. I want to say it was the Braves, Dodgers. Oh, geez, I'm gonna forget Giants and Indians, maybe, but um I think those are the four teams I did, but like I've seen books or partial books out there, but this is all one actually graded. Again, it's probably more because the price of grading isn't probably worth it for some, but when I saw it, I had to have it because obviously Aaron's on here as well, so I get a two for, for me. So happy to have this one. So the uh the golden stamps, Matt, that was that was literally just a stamp book and you had multiple pages in there, or 
Yeah, they did it per team. And so there's like stories in it. And it's a multi page book. It's not just the two pages of stickers. There's a bunch of other pages that you can like rip, like unstick these and put them actually throughout the book. Okay. Um, but yeah, this, it's just an interesting item. And again, I had to show this one on the channel. There's a bunch of items I'm showing on the channel because I haven't done a lot of <laughs> videos, as you guys know. But uh, that one's kind of a world premiere as well. And then this next one, again, kind of in the st uh, stamps as well, right? But uh, this one I picked without the background of this, the green color, the pea green. This is from another one from a book. This is the 59 Oklahoma Today, uh, okay. Warren Spawn, and a four. Can you get that closer to the screen, like in the middle? Oh, I do know that. Is that can you guys um, see it better that way? Is that, is that too much clearer? Yeah. yeah, that looks good. So he was on the top right page of the sheet. There's also, obviously, a mantle. So it was kind of picking people that either resided in Oklahoma. So after the war, because um, he spent some time in Oklahoma during the war there before he went overseas, he, he uh, met his wife there, and they, they kind of went back and settled in Oklahoma. So it was people that were born there, like Mantle, or people that lived there during their playing career. They they had done a lot of players from that era, or uh, part of the country. So it, it was Oklahoma Today magazine, literally. Like, And so I've seen some of these. One guy has like a complete book, and I'd love to have one of those, but uh, or even a sheet. But I uh, just thought that was a really neat item. You don't see a ton of these flying around. They're getting, relatively speaking, low population. Um, I don't remember offhand, but... It's really nice to have that one in the collection. Yeah, I've never seen that before. That was really cool. Um, all right, Dan, let's see what you got. This is the, um, is it 1954? Yeah, 1954 Red Heart. Uh, a, a, a series that I'm really starting to fall in love with. I just purchased the Mini Minoso this week, and I got a Carl Erskine engraving right now. But this spot I've had for several years. It is, as you can see, a BVG-7. Um, there was a lull or, or a delay when the when the boom hit to, like, collector not collectors, but dealers at vintage shows didn't quite know how much their cards were suddenly worth. And this was a good example of that, because I, I forget what I paid for it, but it was about half of what this card would go for at the time that it was booming. So um, really nice pickup there. And beautiful, as you know, the beautiful green color. Many of these Red Heart cards are, in fact, red. Um, and awesome. the BVG holder. I'm not a BVG collector. I don't really like the holders <laughs> that much, and they're not popular anymore. But uh, I picked up another one, 6.5 on the 58 spawn um, for a pennies. I mean, I, I think this card was like cost me like $35 or something, which is both oh speaks to what Theo was talking about before, but also the BVG holder. And, and, and 6.5 for a... You know, beautiful green card with uh, a Hall of Famer like that for ridiculously low money. Hey, you know, sign me up. What was um? I'd love to hear a little bit about about his uh, his pitches. Like, what what was his bread and butter pitch or, or pitches? Does and you guys want to speak about it? I'm pretty sure he was a um, he's a control guy. Um, he did have a lot of strikeouts, but it was more of a compiling thing. Uh, sl slider, uh, in and out fastball, two seamer, four seamer. I mean, he's pretty much just sort of a basic pitcher. I don't think he had a screwball, but I think he had a changeup. Um, so he's one of those guys that just was just so good at his craft that he didn't have to have any gimmicks going on. Hmm. That's cool. All right. Uh, last but not least, the 1960s, um, Matt, this uh, this picture in the right here—that's Matt's uh, monstrosity there. Uh, <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, he's got four yellow league leader cards there on the bottom. Uh, his spawn was uh, obviously leading the league a lot of times in ERA and things like that, and wins. Um, and then down here on the left, that's uh, that's Dan. And Dan, um, why don't we start with you? But first off, um, why don't you talk a little bit about why your collection for spawn in the '60s? Is a little bit more sparse. <laughs> you mean why? Why Matt is now humiliating me? <laughs> <laughs> so, the the best thing about this thing from Matt's um, collection for me as a spawn collector is on the far left in the middle. It's called Lake for Lake, I believe, or Lake to Lake. Lake to Lake, lake yeah, yeah. That, yeah. I've been trying to get that card for so long, and here I am being taunted with an eight. I have no idea what you spent for that, but I know I've tried to get <laughs> fours and fives that have, have taunted me. So um, part of the reason, I, I think what you're getting at here, Theo, and, and it, yeah. part of the reason is 
I, I feel like you collect what you love and mm -hmm. or what you like or whatever. And and Warren Spahn's cards for me in the 1960s do not speak to me like his cards in the 1950s. And a lot of it has to do with, you know, the way Topps presented him. If you look at the bottom right of Matt's cards, you see one of my least favorite cards in the entire <laughs> hobby, which is the 1965 Warren Spahn. Uh, he has no hat on because he's he's on the Mets in that card. And um, they make him look like somebody's grandpa, like got snuck out onto the field. And to me, this is <laughs> this is just sorry, Dan. <laughs> it, it's disrespectful to a guy who literally for three cent three three decades was, you know, a major player in sports. So I've picked up some of his 60s cards, um, yeah. as you can see from there. But you want to know, the, ones that are, the, the ones that are cool. This one's pretty cool, right? The 60 and a 6. Um, you know, 1960 is a, is a set that has many beautiful cards in it. And I think this is a good one. And the other 60 thing that I took out um, is, is an oddball. It's the 1964 Oral Vision. It's, you can see it like a little bit up here. It's, it's a record. Um, like a, you played it on a turntable like back in the old days. And apparently if you played it, it said Warren Spahn's story. But this one's good because it's got the, the little thing in the middle that you have to get onto a turntable still is on there. And the back is really cool. And it says copyrights 1962, but it has the stats through 63. So we know that this is a 64 issue. So the back is actually really good. Um, so that's my that's my 60s stuff. That's that's yeah. cool. Thanks for and, and and Dan's being humble. If you watched his video back in June or July, he mentioned he had a a nicer copy of that sixty five than I have. He had a PSA eight, I believe. Dan, I'm going off memory here, but he yep. sold it out of respect for Warren. He couldn't keep it as collected because again, he didn't he didn't like it, right? So I, kudos I to you. I the money to an old folks home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. So again, so, so again, Dan's being humble. I'm not definitely not trying to humiliate. It's just these ones are the ones that are easy to find and. <laughs> I wish Warren was good as good as Theo has him painted in the 61, but uh, two of those are Venezuelan, so it's really just two league leader cards he's on that year. But So this one is actually one of the very first ones I bought. Um, it's a four sharp corners purchase. I just happened to be searching Spawn, and uh, this is a 62. I know this means a lot more, probably more to Theo than most, like Pittsburgh exhibit, because there was a Kennywood amusement park, if I'm saying that right, Theo. Um, yeah. Where this was like there was like a one park that had its own vending machines of cards, and they used playing cards instead of the normal exhibits we're used to seeing. Um, so this is actually an eight as well, which is kind of crazy. I, I think I got this for a good price. Um, I don't talk a lot about money my channel is cut like maybe two fifty or so, but just given the fact that it's the highest graded, there's only like maybe three cards from the set that are even graded higher of anyone. Um, so happy to have that one in the collection. He does look old, Dan, but uh, not too too bad. <laughs> Not as bad as that Mets card. Um, and then um, I already showed the Lake to Lake stuff. Can I do one more theory? Or maybe I'm going to do a combo here because these actually go together. You're good. I got these um, in a trade slash I had to throw some money in, of course, because these are nicer than what I traded. But I traded one of those ex Pittsburgh exhibits for Killebrew to Stooks, uh, Scott over at Stooks Baseball Cards and Curiosities and threw some uh, currency in with it to get these two 62 Bazooka exhibit. Uh, progressive proofs of spawn. He's obviously in the middle there. You can see him better on this uh, this color one, right? But mm -hmm. I don't have any other bazooka cards of his yet. But to start off with these two, it's like I feel like everything's gonna be downhill from here. I'd love to have <laughs> one of these for uh, Aaron at some point, but um, I think your your friend Howard had some at the national, but I didn't want to break up the set. He was offered them individually, but these come in a set of like seven. Um, so I only have two of the seven, but um, I didn't have the heart to just try to buy one just to have one of him at the time. I kind of wish I did. Uh, in the retrospect, now that I have these two, I think it might have been the same year even that he had. But uh, those are a couple ones. Again, you know, you see the stand-up there. I love that one. I don't know if Theo likes the stand-ups as well uh, from 64. There's, there's a bunch of really good cards. I know, um, you know, Dan's 100% right, though. Some of these cards he looks really, really bad in. This speaks more to my completionist rather than uh, aesthetics view of collected, I guess, right? So... <laughs> Yeah, and I just uh, I want to put some more color to the Kennywood exhibit. Um, so they're called Pittsburgh exhibits, but yeah, there's a theme park in Pittsburgh. It's been open for over a hundred years. Um, it's basically our amusement park, and and it's called Kennywood. And and um, back in the day, they had those Ken. They were they call them Pittsburgh exhibits, but they were 
at the Kennywood theme park. And I, I personally feel they're the holy grail of exhibit cards. And um, they're all of them are scarce. And um, there's actually a Roberto Clemente. And that's one of my, you know, top cards I would I would want to have. But they're, they're so rare to even find, let alone the price. Um, but yeah, they're they're really cool. <laughs> Um, let's get out of this uh, this mode here. We'll wrap up here. So, I t I would love to hear. Um, is there is there something on your spawn want list that um, is more of a grail item? Um, you know, it's going to be hard to find. Going to be expensive for you guys. Yes. Go ahead, Dan, if you want. Well, the lake to lake, as I just said, is is probably my number one grail because it is a nice card and it's a it's a local regional issue. Um, I'd also I, the tip top brand. I'm not sure if, if I'm if I'm really growl for that one, but um, that's one of the ones that I would like to get. Also, um, there's another card that's escaping my mind right now. Um, there's one other card. Matt probably has it, but um, yeah. So I, I mean, the Lake to Lake is really my. It's really the one I'm looking for most. Nice, Matt. Yeah, there there are a few. Of the uh, and I won't be able to get one. The, the 53. So I have the premium from it. Um, I'm gonna cheat again if that's okay. This is like the Dixie Lid Premium, but there's these Dixie Lid ice cream cup things from 53. Oh, yeah. Yep, yep. It's there's one on eBay for 12,500. Obviously, I'm not gonna spend that. <laughs> so, um, there's also what's that? Let me get my checkbook. I'll, I'll... <laughs> I'm, I'm good for it. I'll talk to Beckett's check. Um, and then there's a 40. I, I have a Dixie Lids of Carl Hubble from 1934 to PSA 4, and it cost me like $400. Yeah. So Spawn is in the 50s, 15 years later, is worth that much? Yeah, I think people didn't probably keep in the 50s. For whatever reason, I think that, I think people saved everything in the Great Depression. It could be just an artifact of that, right? You, you didn't throw anything away. I don't, maybe, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, I think people that's what, people have Ziploc bags from the Depression and stuff, right? So could be yeah. part of it. But And then the other ones, um, that Worldwide Exchange, they also did a miniature version of that with just the photo. And there's one of those on eBay right now. It's from 47. Uh it's a hundred grand. It's a PSA 10 though. I don't need a PSA 10 obviously, but there aren't any of those around either. And I, I know um, I'd like to get that at some point as well, but I need to find one that's more in my range uh, of spending. So those two are probably the grail uh, items that I don't think I'm going to get, but I'm going to try to get many of the other ones I can at some point. Cool. Well, this was a, this was a lot of fun guys. Uh, I really appreciate you guys taking time out to getting close to holidays and and uh, I, I love seeing uh, other player collectors. You know, that's what I love to do. And I love seeing these uh, these regional issue cards. Um, so this was a lot of fun. I appreciate both of you guys coming on today. Thank you, Theo. Appreciate having us on. Thanks for having me. I, I'm a big fan of four collectors. Watch every video. And uh, happy to finally be on with you guys. And uh, Theo, I respect and admire your Clemente collection. Um, Thanks, man. So really wonderful to have me to be on the show and i appreciate it awesome awesome and uh if if you haven't watched dan's channel or matt's channel i, I suggest going to check them out um they got some amazing cards um and they're they're great members of the community so uh thanks everybody for watching this episode and i'll see you guys on the next one thanks